We are all human beings, are we not? Yet it is hard to love all human beings. We feel that our love needs boundaries and our attachment has even fewer in its scope while having many boundaries. So as an individual, we find ourselves here on this planet. We're born into a certain so-called race or ethnicity, a certain culture, certain religion or spiritual craft or, or no spirituality or no religion. Uh, we're born into different politics um, based on our community and also our parents, our friends, the influences outside of ourself. And every, every one of these groups thinks of one or more of other groups um, as their rivals, as their enemies. And the more we chop up the world into sections, whether it be for, whether it be for religious, uh, national, or just pure boundary lines so that we can see where one land is or another, the more we do that, the more we create a macro culture of division. In truth, race does not exist. Ethnicity doesn't quite exist. Um, you can disagree with, with me on this, but I actually have done my research with many um, well-renowned professors and also logicians. At any rate, um, even if you believe that you're different from somebody with a different skin, skin tone, maybe you think of race, maybe you think of yourself as different from another race of people, these lines are arbitrary. They do not ultimately exist, and they only exist in the finite reality we find ourselves in. That finite reality is but a few generations, maybe seven generations at most, before everything reshuffles. What we can pass on to future generations is to love all people. And if we are going to be a part of a country, then that national sense of pride comes second. Our human solidarity comes first. At least that's how I like to think that I live. National boundaries don't really matter that much to me. Religious and spiritual, well, religious boundaries don't mean that much to me. Societal boundaries don't mean that much to me. Class doesn't mean that much to me. And I'm not telling you this because I think I'm a great guy. It's just that the more you study history and then you more that you realize people are the same by observing people, the more you see how these lines are drawn because of fear, not because of love, not because of necessity, but because of fear. I'll give you an example, a historical example that a lot of people can understand. Um, Nazi Germany, World War II. They invaded Russia to gain Lebensraum, living space. Um, places where German people can uh, just expand into new lands and live there. There's a few different factors that made this not make any sense. Because Germany, for one, had a lot of living space as it was. And, you know, of course, opening a two-front war with Russia while already at war with the other allies, that was really stupid. But besides that, I mean, Germany had a lot of living space. Um, and not only that, the resources that Hitler wanted to procure, um, they cost more than they were worth. So why did this idea of Lebensraum come into mind? Was it really for the benefit of the German people? Or was it for the benefit of an ideology? Specifically an ideological difference between German people and Russian people, German people and Slavic people, or even uh, there's a lot of Jewish Bolsheviks. I mean, that's the Nazis said that they were like hand in hand, but that's not really true because Stalin later on um, cracked down on Jewish people for no reason. Um, but the reason why Labor's Run became a thing without, without it ne needing to be a necessity was that an uncertain, an, an uncertain culture, an uncertain leader as well, um, needs 
security needed a buffer needed a buffer and it needed to show its superiority not only for others but for themselves so it was very much done on an individual level by hitler but also a lot of nazis but the insecurities of a single person like hitler actually translate to a lot of people's ideologies not necessarily that other ideologies are nazi but there's a need for security there's a need for space there's a need for a border between that which you are and that which you don't understand that which you identify as and that which identifies as something else um, because fear wants a wall it wants a boundary a thick boundary and that boundary has caused many wars not just in world war ii everybody always has to come to negotiation table eventually and i'm not talking about world war ii right now i'm talking about in general and it is only after fear those who are the most fearful are vanquished or perhaps the most feel fearful are uh uh shown that they have to come to a different conclusion that this table becomes a necessity rather than the boundary becoming a necessity and different peoples no matter if you're talking about culture, race, politics, even. Most people have thought that these things are definitions of themselves and not just the external manifestations of a few attachments. But really, a few attachments create all these things. There's so much within an individual, so much within a human being, that these external attachments to who people tell you you are um, cause so many problems with you being an individual and your progression towards enlightenment, towards liberation. You can even say towards heaven, whatever you think, or even a complete expressional nature of a, a life well lived. That is your own form of art. That is, and you can call that from Nietzsche. Um, but you find that not only are these things, these efforts, you know, sputter and die out. Uh, not all of them sputter that quickly or die out that quickly, but a lot of them do. Um, is because they were momentary exasperations of a fear that does not apply to the generation that is coming. And that is what is wonderful, is that the people that come after us usually are a little bit better. That's what I think. A lot of people think that the 1950s were great, but they weren't great for black people in the United States, were they? It was awful. We cannot idealize the past, um, especially the recent past, in order to create a brighter future. But getting back to my point, an individual, an individual must observe and relate to themselves. What do I need to work on myself as an individual? It's not about necessarily following the people around you, but you can identify with them, sure. But the individual, in order to make spiritual progress, needs to look at the nature of society, how society is progressing, wherever they are, and also how they relate to that society. We identify ourselves by relations a lot of the time, by these different classifications, topics, and subjects that I've been talking about. We, we identify with these various events, but also these various cultures and national identities. That's where we identify. That's where the average person identifies kind of like ant mountains in a way. Um, you know, ants are a very good um, comparison to humanity in some of the worst ways, to be honest. But you must, in my opinion, look within yourself and ask, who am I beyond this? Am I something beyond my identification with that which is around me? Am I more than someone who is meant to fall into line? Am I great enough to choose my own path? Am I wise enough to continue along that path despite the obstacles? And what does it mean to be me? Why am I different? Am I different? What defines me as an individual compared to those around me? These are difficult questions that I cannot answer for you. Nobody can. You have to answer them for yourself. A lot of religions would have you fall in line, say, just trust Jesus, just trust Krishna, 
Um, and <laughs> granted, I am Hindu, but you know, I I like Krishna, but it's I'm not Hare Krishna. Uh, all this trust, all this blind faith. It's another way to keep you from thinking about what you're doing, exactly where you should go. Faith is good. Faith is fine. But blind faith, and for too long, is foolishness. It is a misstep. It is a pain that we need not suffer. And we see it popping up again and again and again. Even with communism and uh, capitalism in, recent, in the recent over a century. We see a faith in the mission rather than a manifestation of the goal of capitalism or communism. As a person, the very first step is trying to figure out who you are, and then you seek definition. You should never allow yourself to be um, influenced, internally at least, by the definitions other people try to give you. Become one with yourself. Find yourself. Become one with yourself. And figure out exactly how you can further develop your path once you find it. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. And I hope all of you have a wonderful day.